the universe, infinite vastness, unknown planets, unexplored objects. This is how many videos that deal with space begins. But let's be honest. It's also hits the nail on the head. The universe remains probably the greatest mystery of the mankind. It's infinitely large, and the secrets it holds are equally vast. Anyone who looks out at the stars sees some principle only on the surface, what is waiting out there. But since everyday scientists and researchers are busy uncovering and solving the numerous mysterious of the universe, we can just viably claim that we are getting a little bit smarter every day. Today, we present to you a complete history of the day when scientists actually discovered the universe. If you like our videos, then please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Gateway to Knowledge and look forward for the videos that would be waiting for you in the future. What is so special in a date? Strictly speaking, New Year's Day is just an arbitrary flip of the calendar, but it can also be a cathartic time of reflection and renewal. So it is with one of the most extraordinary dates in the history of science, January 1, 1925. You could describe it as a day when nothing remarkable happened, just the routine reading of a paper at a scientific conference. Or you could recognize it as the birthday of modern cosmology, the moment when humankind discovered the universe as it truly is. All across the sky, observers had documented intriguing spiral nebulae, swirls of light, that resembled ghostly pinwheels in space. The most famous one, the Andromeda Nebula, was so prominent that it was easily visible to the naked eye on a dark night. The significance of those universal objects was a mystery, however. Some researchers speculated that the spiral nebulae were huge and distant systems of stars comparable to our Milky Way galaxy. But many others were equally convinced that the spirals nebula were small nearby clouds of gas. In this view, other galaxies were far out of sight and appeared as blue whales lurking in the far depths of the cosmos. Or perhaps there were no other galaxies at all, and our Milky Way was all there was, a single system that defined the entire universe. The dispute between the two sides was so intense that it prompted a famous 1920 great debate, which ended with an unsatisfying draw. The correct picture of our place in the universe arrived just a few years later through the work of one of the most famous names in astronomy, Edwin Powell Hubble. Starting in 1919, Hubble had established himself as one of the most patient and accurate observers at Mount Wilson Observatory in California. Mount Wilson, in turn, had just established itself as the premier outpost for astronomical research. At that time, it had just completed 100-inch Hooker telescope. It was the perfect combination of the right observer in the right place at the right time. Hubble also benefited greatly from earlier research by Vesto M. Slipher of Lowell Observatory. Slipher had found that many of the spiral nebulae were moving at enormous velocities, far faster than those of any known stars, and that the spirals were mostly traveling away from us. To Slipher, those peculiar velocities provided convincing evidence that they must be independent systems driven by unknown mechanisms at work far outside our Milky Way. But Slipher lacked the necessary resources to prove his interpretation. What he needed was a giant telescope like the one Hubble was piloting on Mount Wilson. This is where our story kicks into high gear. We always have to be cautious when it came to theory and interpretation. Hubble also focused his scientific attention on the spiral nebulae without overtly endorsing the island universe interpretation. He preferred to wait until he could be the one to step forward with definitive proof or disproof, if that's where the evidence pointed. In 1922, another important piece of the puzzle fell into place. That year, Swedish astronomer Nut Lundmark observed what he believed were individual stars in the arms of the spiral nebula M33. Shortly after, John Duncan at Mount Wilson spotted dots of light that grew fainter and brighter in the same nebula. Could these be variable stars, similar to ones in the Milky Way, but far dimmer owing to their enormous distance? Sensing the answer was at hand, Hubble stepped up his efforts. 
He spent long nights on his favorite bentwood chair, guiding the movements of the riveted steel mount of the Hooker telescope to cancel out Earth's rotation. The effort paid off with highly detailed, long exposure images of the Andromeda Nebula. The mottled light of the nebula began to resolve itself into a multitude of luminous points, looking not like a smear of gas, but like a vast hive of stars. Close proof came in October of 1923, when Hubble spied the telltale flicker of a lone Cepheid variable star in one of Andromeda's arms. This type of star grows brighter and dimmer in a regular and predictable way, with its intrinsic luminosity directly related to its period of variation. Simply by timing the 31-day cycle of this star as it slowly flickered, Hubble could deduce its distance. His estimate was 930,000 light-years less than half the modern estimate, but a shockingly large number at the time. That distance placed Andromeda, one of the brightest and presumably closest of the spiral nebulae, vastly outside the bounds of the Milky Way. In principle, the great debate was settled then and there. Spiral nebulae were other galaxies, and our Milky Way was just one outpost within a staggeringly vast universe. And yet, still the story is far from over. Hubble became even more cautious and began to search for more and better evidences. By the following February, he uncovered a possible second Cepheid in Andromeda and possibly in three other nebulae as well. Despite his obvious excitement at the Andromeda findings, Hubble was still reluctant to publish his results. For all his surface confidence, he was terribly concerned about making a grand pronouncement prematurely. Every time he walked down from the summit to attend the formal 5 p.m. dinners at Mount Wilson's living quarter, Hubble had to face his astronomer brethren. Because not all of them accepted the existence of other galaxies. So, being aware of his reputation, Hubble was worried that he might end up looking the fool. Adrian van Meenen, who was a playful and well-liked Dutch astronomer at Mount Wilson, was in fact still vigorously arguing in the other direction. He was convinced that he had observed some of the spiral nebulae rotating, which was possible only if they were relatively small and nearby. Hubble helped him in this settling and cleared the doubt in his mind until he was utterly sure of his results. Hubble's discovery inevitably leaked out to the media. As a result, the first public announcement of his astronomical breakthrough was a small story that ran in the New York Times on November 23, 1924. Hubble still refused to publish his findings. One of the stellar astronomer, Henry Norris Russell, pressed him to present his findings to a Washington, D.C. meeting of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, which offered a $1,000 prize for best paper. When Hubble still didn't submit anything, Russell snorted, well, he is an ass. With a perfectly good thousand dollars available, he refuses to take it. Then soon after this, Russell opened his mail to find that Hubble's paper had just arrived. Now and only now, we will get to the stunning public reveal. On January 1, 1925, Hubble remained in splendid isolation at Mount Wilson, while Russell read his revolutionary paper about the existence of other galaxies to an enthusiastic crowd. Hubble shared the best paper prize. His paper ended the great debate and did much more. It quickly increased the size of the known universe by a staggering factor of 100,000. It set the stage for the discovery of the expanding universe. If any date can be said to be the birthday of modern cosmology, this is it. As Hubble watched the cyclical flaring and dimming of the Cepheids in Andromeda, he extended the reach of the human mind in yet another way. He erased the lingering concern that stars lying at great distances from us might behave differently from those in our immediate celestial neighborhood. Now that scientists could examine stars in other galaxies, they could establish the constancy of the universe over space and time as well. By modern reckoning, the Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years away which means the light we see now started on its way earthward 2.5 million years ago. That is, we are seeing the stars in Andromeda that are not only 2.5 million light years away, but also living 2.5 million years in the past. Nevertheless, they look identical to nearby stars. As Edwin Hubble and other astronomers looked out to ever greater distances, they added more and more evidence for the principle of spatial and temporal uniformity. All across space and time, 
atoms seem to give off the same light, and variable stars seem to follow the exact same physical laws. This constancy of nature lent credibility to the search for a single set of overarching cosmic rules. Or, as Albert Einstein might have put it, it showed that God does not change the house rules of the cosmos. That was one hell of a birthday present for the human mind. Hope you enjoyed our today's video. Please share your suggestions and ideas in the comment section below.